Welcome everybody. So today we're going to take a quick peek at something here. I've got my signal generator on the left. This is my old Marshall Duel that I did. I had to just double check it because it got knocked over and I wanted to make sure it was okay, which is I had to fix something, but I did. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is over here on the right. We'll go in and get a little closer shot on that in a second, but basically uh, I would just want you to see right now I'm plugged in. You can see the probes taking off the left. That's just directly connected to the input. The probe's giving me about 400 millivolts on the, on the oscilloscope and I'm getting 0.15 millivolts on the multimeter. Now, I don't know why that's so different, but it is. So at this point, I'm gonna zoom in to just that, and I think I need to adjust my multimeter so it's a little bit more visible because of the glare. But basically, I'll tilt it up a little bit more this way. Uh, and then effectively, you can see I've got 400 millivolts here uh, on the scope, and I've got about 150 millivolts here. That's just to show you, you can still get a measurement. Now, another important point I could make also is you don't need, uh, you could just do it with a multimeter. And if you'll buy a small cable like this, just your like mini jack that will plug into your phone. If you have a phone that does that, I know newer iPhones don't, sorry guys, you can't do that. But, and then you can get just like a, an adapter or sometimes you can buy a cable that will do both. But effectively you can plug this into your phone, plug this into the input of the amp and then you can buy, app, or not, not even buy, you can get free apps on the app store for Android and, and for Apple that are a signal generator. So that would also help you get a signal like this coming in. So that just shows us the input of the amp. I've got 0.150, which is 150 millivolts, and this says I have about 400. Now I initially had thought this should be because of root mean squared that these usually measure. You can even see it says RMS here. That's 0.7 roughly, 0 0.707 of the, the max real voltage. But 0 0.707 is definitely not 0.15 from 400. So that's like less than half. But at any rate, um, I'm not sure why that discrepancy is. It could be calibration issue, like maybe either my scope is off a bit or my um, meter is off. I don't know which one. If anybody has any idea there, I'd, I'd appreciate it. But they definitely still correlate to growth. So if I then move my multimeter probe, we're gonna take it from that input stage to the first gain stage. What most people would end up seeing is a pretty significant jump in signal output. Oh, I don't have the amp on. Uh, let's turn the amp on. <laughs> See the green light coming on? That means my amp's now on. Okay, so if I go to the first gain stage, it might take it a second to warm up now. The output from that tube should have signal, and there it does. So if I zoom that back down a little bit so we can see the signal, you can see now I'm on five volts per division. So I've got about a 20 volt output there. So I'm gonna take my lead from my multimeter and I'm gonna hook it to the sim similarly to the output of this guy. Hold on, let me turn the max master volume down a bit, I don't want it. So if you look, now this is showing about eight volts instead of the what looks like 20 volts on that, but that's similar range. The bigger point here is that you can definitely see 7.9 volts AC at that next gain stage. So without needing to go scope all the way through everything, I'm just gonna show now, as I step through the different parts of the, of the gain stage, I can go to a, a coupling capacitor at each point in the gain stage and compare that to what I was seeing in other locations. So um, the phase inverter will be this one. So I would like to see the input of the phase inverter. I've got 13 volts at the input of the phase inverter and I had about eight volts at the other gain stage. So you can see through the tone stack, there's a slight amount of gain, but not a lot. But again, now I can look at the output of the phase inverter at the grids of the power tubes. They're about 13, but that's because I have the master volume down. If I bring the master volume up, you'll see that going up. Um, so you can see now there's about 60 volts at max, but this would be a good way to simulate. Let's say for some reason I'm expecting that I have my max, my volume at max, but I'm only getting like five volts, that seven volts, that means that there's something losing signal before my grids of my power tube. In this case, we know it's just my master volume, but that, that is how you can trace signal loss throughout uh, the, the thing. Or if you get to a spot where you know there should be signal and there's not anything at all, but you saw it in a previous game stage, that also helps you troubleshoot where you might've lost signal. So this is a really good way of being able to detect where in your process you've lost signal. Now, the disadvantage, of course, is that you can't see the waveform. So right now I'm on the output. If I was to crank to max the output to where we, we drive the, uh, the output a bit, then um, we would have a bit of a problem because we would not see, uh, hold on, let me turn that around. I want to actually quickly attach the scope. So the scope, If we pull that up so that it sees this. So you can see now 
you can see actually how the signal is actually distorted because of the high amount of gain I'm driving it with. If I turn the volume down on the input, we can clean it up to where it gets to a clean sine wave. So say you couldn't figure out why you were supposed to be having this, a scope does help you see, at least visually, somewhat how this, this, this uh, signal is changing with the squish that can happen. I get some of this sometimes. I think it's DC coupled. I want AC coupled. All right, so there, now we can see this wave, the sine wave, and as we increase it, you'll start seeing Okay, sorry. I'm turning the wrong thing out. Okay, let me turn that down a little bit. So if you if I start increasing the, the volume of the channel, you'll start seeing the let me, the signal start to squish funny. That's normal gain in this case, but you definitely can't see that easily with something like this. You can only see if you're getting signal. So that's kind of the trade-off you're getting. It is really nice to have a scope to do so work, but you can always troubleshoot with just a multimeter and seeing what your voltages are in AC around the signal path to see if you are losing signal somewhere. So uh, hopefully that helps give you guys a good tip on how to do something like this. Please, if you like this type of content, give me some comments below. Tell me what you think. Uh, tell me if you guys understand why there's that big discrepancy on the multimeter versus the uh, oscilloscope as to why I was getting say 400 millivolts input but only about 150 millivolts on the multimeter but at any rate that uh, is uh, something that I think is really uh, a nice easy tip to being able to figure out some of this kind of troubleshooting without needing all this extra gear so please uh, give us a subscribe if you want to see more content like this and, and a thumbs up would be greatly appreciated cheers thanks